Hello? Hey, 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 back again. I told you I'd be back within five minutes, guys. And let's see, I think I was pretty much spot on, guys. Yeah, I definitely was back within five minutes, and we've already got a panel inside of Discord already and waiting to go. Eager to say hello to everybody. So, uh, let's see, get my Discord open and get that open. Boom, we're in business. Right, okay, uh, first people in, try thinking. Brandon K, Paige, Amanda Young, uh, Mighty Mice, Colin Dresser, and Cleary, ready for round two. Uh, in the show channel, we've got Crow, we've got F. Evangelist, we've got the real Bob Dole, and we've got Brandon Toy. So, how is everybody doing? I think I'm doing all right. <laughs> Crow said all in right. the, hey, oh, well. hey, F. Evangelist. Uh, Crow in the in the introduction he said um, this was off air. He actually says that this image that uh, that I've been showing to you guys should be the new black swan in his opinion because there seems to be very little refraction in it. So I've got it on screen for everybody. This is uh, uh, Globe Earth Crow who says that this image should be yep. the new black swan. Well, I, exactly what I said. It would replace it with the other black swan. I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, you know, subscribe to the old black swan because it's deformed and stuff like that. But, but this is perfect. So, how would you sort of like go, ex you know, go to explain this on the globe? I mean, what, what would, you know, where would you start? Um. Now, for this image, uh, there's problems with it. But the other image where there was heights and you compared the five meters altitude with what should be seen, this is good. But this one, th there's problems with it. Okay, so tell us what's the problem with... See, the top image here, believe it or not, because um, Miles Davis already did the calculations, and he's very particular with what observations he puts out. Now, his claim is whenever he puts a video out, it falls within 0.1% of it being perfect for with standard refraction. So if his elevation height is 3 feet and the distance is 20 miles, you can guarantee that if he can only see 25 feet of something in the distance with standard refraction, you will only see 25 feet of the object that he's presenting. So he's very, very particular with that. So I am confident that what he's showing here, at the top image at least, should be what you should expect to see on a globe. In other words, that little bit of a mountain top there is all that you should see on a globe Earth. Whereas, 
if you look at the bottom but, but, image, mm -hmm. we see, not only do we see Bass Rock, but we see Fidra in the foreground, we see Craig Leaf, uh, sorry, Craig Leaf, and we've got Fidra over here, and we've got these uh, these hills, these um, trees, trees line over in the distance here. I mean, you don't see any of that in Miles' video. Yeah, well, the problem with this picture is that we cannot compare them to each other because they are not the same altitude. Oh, they are? They were taken from the same spot? Then, it's same spot, but not same altitude. What do you mean by that? They're in, they uh, in the same location. Yeah, same location, but I think uh, it's five meters, the, the one on the bottom. Uh, it's the exact same height. Okay, it, but if it's exam exact same height, then why that that rock on the left, that closer rock on the this left, one, yeah. why? Yeah, I see a lot of water above it in the in the lower image. A lot of water above this. Yes, I agree. Yeah, and compare it with its own size. I'm I'm not. No, I, talking I, about absolute, absolute I absolutely size of water. I absolutely agree. But that's what you see when the water's flat. When the water's flat, it extends. When the when you've got no pressure pushing in so when you've got a tide pushing in the tide is being pushed up so it, cr it it narrows the amount of visible water that you can see so you don't see as far because it's being pushed upwards it's not being extended in the bottom image the water's lying flat it has no swell acting on it and no tide pushing on it so it lays flat and that's what you see an extended flat piece of water motionless flat piece of water miles is is different you can see you can actually see the water being bulged up you can see the the, the, the tides coming in on this that's the difference well the, the the horizon in in both models the flat and the globe uh, will, will not be affected that much by tides well have you, right so do you think this this water rushing up here to fill up the estuary because he's at the top of the estuary right so the water's coming in from way over here so it's rushing towards him up this estuary this is like a, a big river right so the water's rushing up and then it rushes back out again when the tide goes out so as it rushes up are you going to tell me that that pushing in of the tide isn't going to have an effect on what you're seeing here uh, well or what you would see looking over it um uh, i i don't know it's uh it's just uh, i don't know th these things okay well i've got a i might have a video to show you um just let's have a look see if i can bring it up it's the video that i put out um just a, a couple of days ago actually um just just give me 20 seconds to get it up okay uh, there we go. So let me bring this over here and just pause that for a sec. And I'm going to change screens, show you a different screen. Okay, so let me know when you can see my new screen that I'm presenting in, in, in Discord or YouTube. In Discord. Oh, okay, hold on. Looks like I can see it. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, you can see it. Right, cool. Okay, so I'm going to show you um, a location. And the tide is pushing in from the left to the right. Okay, so you're going to see the video right now. So can you see the tide pushing in from the Can you see the tide behind the guy? Can you see the fella in the foreground? Uh, what is that in the background? It looks like mountains, I don't know. That's the water rushing water. in. Water? Yes, that's yeah. water rushing in, yeah. So that's the tide mm. pushing in up the estuary. Now I have a similar estuary to Miles Davis, almost identical, but it's on the opposite side of the country. So mine's on the west coast, his is on the east. And they're the same, they're the same design, they have the same shape, the same look, everything. And this is what's happening when the tide pushes in and goes in towards, uh, basically, if somebody was filming, like Miles Davis, he would be over here on the left, way over in the distance, looking across this raging water. Now, can you see Can you see how the tide is pushing up? Can you see that water, how high that water is? Mm-hmm. 
Okay. So do you not think looking over that is going to have an effect on what you're seeing um, if you're upstream? So if you're upstream looking across, this is rushing towards you, this water's piling up towards you, do you think you would have um, some kind of obstruction in your way with that sort of water rushing up? This is what the effect of the tide pushing up those estuaries has. Well, if if that's like uh, the dam, they open the gates of the dam and the water is rushing, then yes. But uh, nice. I don't know if this is just a flow of water. Like something sudden, yeah, I would expect something like that and block. <laughs> well, this is, no, this is just, this is just the tide. This is just the tide coming in. The tide comes in like that and the tide rushes out. And up that estuary, you know, uh, where I live, and, and film across. This is where I film across towards Barrow. So if I was to film in these conditions, right, across here to try and see Barrow, I'd have a big problem. In fact, I did actually do that one time, and half of the lighthouse was hidden from a nearer spot. I actually went and I, I actually filmed the lighthouse, and half of it was underwater, and I didn't know why. But I was filming as the tide was pushing up the channel, and then I realised what was going on. And when the tide stops pushing in and it settles and it's no longer you when that water stops pushing in and then it, be, it becomes high tide everything flattens down everything settles down and then it starts to recede and it starts to go back the other way right so you get these you get these windows of opportunity at high tide and low tide where there's no push and pull on the water right so you get that option that that moment um, and obviously anything exasperated in that time like swell or whatever will have an effect but if you can go on days when there's no swell and there's no tide pushing in or receding uh, you'll get flat water and that's what I'm sure that's that's the difference Miles films when the tides pushing in right in fact his second to last video I think it, I believe it was or his last one he filmed mid tide on the way up or an hour after low tide so the tide was already pushing in just like this so he was filming over that water pushing up the estuary, and I'm going to say that that pushing up of the estuary, pushing up that water pushing up the estuary, just like that, is going to affect what he's seeing in the distance. It's going to create this bulging effect. I would think so. I would think yeah. so. Yeah, I think as you said, we need to to learn more about fluid dynamics. But what you said explained yeah a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Right, okay, so anyway, how is everybody? Who have we got in? Let's see. Um, let's see who's joined. So we've got uh, right the hands joined, left lane's joined, um, we've got uh, Aaron Armstrong's joined, uh, Crow, F Evangelist, and the real Bob Dole. Right, okay, uh, anything you want to say, guys? Whilst I get everything organised over here. I have one conservation uh, for uh, the the haze issue. Okay. Uh, if haze do doesn't deform the the shape of objects, then I, I wouldn't uh, judge that it it affects the observation. Say that again. If if the haze doesn't affect the object shape, like you know, when you look at the black swan, you don't see haze, but you see the cranes are twisted and things like that. But if it was hazy, but the cranes are straight, I would accept it. So right, okay. So if it wasn't hazy in the black swan image, did you say? Uh, I said if it was hazy. But the cranes are straight. I would have accepted that image. All right. Okay. Because I might have um, an image that um... the cranes have nothing to do with the image. I might have an image just the horizon. Give me five minutes to find an image for you guys, and you carry on talking, and I'll find this image, and then I'll come back to to crow. Okay, so um, the point of, of the cranes being twisted means that we're not seeing the reality of things, be it the, 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 the platform or the horizon. Correct. The platform, I, I don't think you understand the argument. Yeah, we understand the argument. The fact is, there's... How, how about this? How about this? If you under, if you understand, no, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. That, if you understand the argument, no, 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 no. Okay. No, no, no. Fine, fine. Go ahead. 
No, I'm just saying the, the image uh, reflects severe refraction, which indicates it does not represent reality. It should be thrown in the garbage. And, and I've just admitted here can, a few minutes guys, ago. Can you define refraction then and what it has in relation to the horizon? Uh, can I keep it simple? A uh, few minutes ago, I just admitted that this image is great and does not, uh, you know, agree with the globe it, because I don't see a lot of refraction. So uh, you see, I'm just, I'm trying to be fair. I hope you can accept that. I can accept that. Can can you give me the black swan argument then, so that you understand, so that I know you understand it? Okay. the The black swan, the cranes are twisted. This means I'm not seeing the reality of things, including the position of the horizon or even the base of of that. Uh, okay. Platform. Okay. You need to stop. No. No. Okay. Forget about the cranes. Can you? Tell me that you understand the argument by repeating what our argument is. The argument of the flat earth? The black swan. Yeah, that we can see the base and we can see the horizon. Um, yeah, no, uh, no. Yeah, can you it? recite the argument? Recite yeah. the uh, I'm, I'm trying to recite the, the flat earth uh, point of view, and I'm not sure maybe I don't want to misrepresent it. So you say it, and I say, yeah, that's what I understand. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. I, I could use a little bit of help here because I'm at work trying to work and I just want to make sure you guys understand the argument before you start talking about the cranes. Well, I say the argument as I understand, but you say this is wrong, so uh, I'm open ears. Okay, the argument, the argument is that on, a, on an alleged globe with a radius of 3959 miles, the horizon, the geometric horizon can be no more than 1.225 miles multiplied by the square root of the observer's height in feet. Yeah, and there will be like most of the platform would be obscure. Yeah, I get it. So just to sum that up, the, what you're saying is whenever you watch the video for the black swan, you see that the horizon is way, way further than it should be, according to, you know, their own math, right? Yeah. Correct. It can't be there. Right. And that horizon is higher than eye level. So uh, I guess... In a way, he's right. The, the cranes themselves don't really matter. They're just, they're like marker points. They're like, okay, see this thing? It's this far away. Now look what's still behind it. It's the horizon. Well, there, there's two points. The, the cranes are just like a, a testimony to the situation of this image. And the second thing, the horizon is higher than eye level in that image. And I think it's it's a good chance to to ask about the geometric horizon and the apparent horizon for the flat Earth. We don't see the geometric horizon. Yeah, those shimmering cranes also. It's it's a little bit broad brush to just say that because there's distortion, you've got to throw the whole image out. Um, that that could be a, a specifically localized event right there. There could just be an area of warm air right at the in between the, the observer and those crane tips similarly you know if you stand in front of a a, a power station at the at the top of the uh, smokestack you know you can see shimmering but but the the atmosphere surrounding the the power station doesn't have any shimmering so i think that's a little bit generalized to just say well I, i'll disregard that image because the crane tips are, are distorted well, if I have, if I'm a judge and there's a witness coming and I trust that this witness is going to speak the truth, but he's drunk, I'm not going to take his testimony.
Right, guys, I'm going to well, share my. Yeah, you'd see whether it was. Sorry. Yeah, you'd see whether the whether the, the drunk guy's testimony was supported by anybody else's. You wouldn't just throw it out. If you knew him to be of good character, you wouldn't just throw it away because he's drunk. If it conflicted with four other people's testimony, then yes, I guess you could say, you know, his testimony was impaired. But um, yeah, anyway, it's it's not quite a direct relationship. Yeah, well, well, that that's kind of what I did here today. I I dismissed the the black swan and I accept this current one that we are we have been showing here today. Okay, well, let, let's look I, into I, the. I really appreciate your 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 open mindedness. It's fabulous. Right. Well, let's look at the the original black swan. So. Obviously, this isn't the, the image that I would normally present. This is just what I've got enough uh, uh, the channel uh, video myself. So I'm just taking a screenshot of this right now. And your objection to this image is this this crazy bent arm on the on the left, isn't it? Um, yes, it's it's and an indication, so not this portion exact to be specific. Okay, so there's, there's that there though, and there's that bit of waving up there. Okay. Yeah, it, and this elongation. There. Yeah. But do you realise though that this has also been repeated for a second time? Were you aware of that? With the the crane straight and everything looks fine. Well, I was just saying, were you aware that there was a second repeated observation by the no, same guy no. in the same spot? Right. Okay. I, I'm not aware. So. So here's a second repeated observation in the same spot. So I've just taken a screenshot. Obviously, you can just tell I've just done it now because this is the Discord that I've taken the screenshot from on the left. So basically, oh, no. so so there's the uh, there's the original black swan with the the wavy arms, etc. So the same guy went back down to the beach, and he repeated the observation from the same observer height, and there was the repeated observation obviously I've not had time to straighten the image out yet like I normally would do and mess around with the contrast and the colors to bring things out but essentially this is the same observation with may I add the horizon or the perceived horizon behind the platform that's behind uh, I think it's platform habitat and platform what's the other one platform hill house so behind platform habitat is the horizon over 9.4 miles away uh, observation height just a few feet um, and in this particular image there is no distortion on these cranes or anything to do with it so what do you say now that you've seen a repeated observation but not with the the arguments that you were bringing up saying that um, you can definitely see some problems with it because in this image I don't see any problems uh, there's one problem where's the horizon it's well, way back there let's uh well let's do some brightness and contrast on it to try and pick out where the horizon is so let's just change a couple of things over so that'll just do a little bit so now we can see more definition on the image um would you agree that there's the feet of the platform and behind it is the horizon yeah that, that's the feet but the horizon appears to be at the start of the lower crane the lower crane the, the start of this one yeah yeah the, the, you yes. okay, okay oh, so in the middle of the screen okay well let's all right well I'll tell you what then I'm gonna say that it's behind the second platform but we'll give it we'll say that it's at the same height let's just say for argument's sake just right now that it's at the same height as the platform in the distance right so that's 9.4 miles away do you realize the implications of agreeing to say that the horizon is visible, at least in this image, at 9.4 miles away from an observation height of about 4 feet. Well, the, the problem is you're moving the, the mouse not on the horizon, the horizon is higher than that. Okay, so... Or the apparent horizon is higher than that. Right, so let's put a line in. Um, That's right. I'm going to put the line in uh, there firstly and then I'm going to lower it because I believe that the horizon is there. That's where I believe the horizon is. Would you agree that that's where the horizon is or do you think it's higher up? Yet, or, yes, exactly. This is where I think the horizon is. Okay, perfect. So you think the horizon's up there. I actually think it's down there, visible. But if you want to say there, that's fine. That's further away, obviously. Uh, me personally, I'm going to say it's here. 
Still, that's around about the same distance, if not beyond. I'm going to say it's beyond the horizon platform. That still puts it at least my, nine miles away, right? At least nine miles away for an observation height of about four feet. That is impossible on a globe. You cannot. Yeah, have a if, yeah. If yeah, if that is the horizon where you're putting the 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 white line, then yes, this should be the the famous black swan. But I believe that the horizon is where you put the the line higher. Okay, so if the horizon is there, that means that we have an infinite plane. Yeah, it means we have this this other third model of the Earth convex or something like that. <laughs> Would you say there's any distortion in this image, though? I mean, from the platforms, because you see the, the your original argument with the original black swan, can I say, over on this side, was that the the crane arms were all wonky and it was distorted and you know you couldn't rely upon this because it was a bit haywire however okay, but this one doesn't have those effects now what are you going to say what what's what's it are we just seeing these these platforms or do you think they're now holograms because they have to be a hologram in your in your model because they have to be being loomed up Well, I, I think I was very specific and said it two times for the black swan that I saw, the famous black swan, the cranes and the horizon being higher than eye level. So th those are two things. Now, in this image, I see the cranes are fine, but I see the horizon higher than eye level. I could be wrong. Maybe this is not the horizon, but it appears to be the horizon for me. Yeah, I think that's just a cloud in the, in the background. In fact, I'm pretty sure when I play the video, I'm just going to double check it inside the video when it zooms in. I'll share my screens in a sec, guys. Yeah, it's definitely just some clouds off in the distance. Right, so yeah, you can see that on the on the right hand side actually you can see that effect. So is this more a, a you know, I mean, does that change your opinion of the original black swan? You know? Yes, if that's if this uh, the horizon where you think it is, then yes, this, this should be the black swan, and I would put it with this uh, with with flutter, flat flutter uh, observation in the same category. Okay, wonderful. We're gonna have you as a flat earther soon, you know, crow. <laughs> We're gonna get you over to the globe side, to the flat earth side, very soon. You know that. Would would that bother you to be a flat earther, bro? <laughs> you don't even have no. to be a flat earther. You just need to be a globe skeptic. He said, uh, you know, oh well, that must but, mean but, it's concrete. Uh, I, I want him to. Okay, fine. Think I it's just concrete. Want him to but my the question. point is, it can't be your ball. That's the point. I just it can't be a ball. Did you say something, Rob? Yeah, I just wanted him to answer my question. Okay, do you want to repeat the question? Would it really be that bad if you turned into a flat earther? Would your life really change all that much? No, I don't think so. I would. I don't think no, I would be. I don't upset. think so either. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what would change? Your outlook on life. I'll tell you that much. I guarantee you, one hundred percent, your life. You would look at life a lot differently. But your life may not change all that well, much. Well, uh, because I can tell I, you, my I life did, hasn't changed all that much in four years. Full simulation many times. Well, I was saying I, I did uh, made uh, some mental simulation that I went on a rocket and I saw the Earth is flat. Now what I I would think and the the, the this it came to my mind tons of questions. Uh, uh, no one can answer because I, I did. I did find some answer for myself. So how these there, answer are wrong, and if no one can have answer all me. the answers. We might not ever know. I don't see the problem. It's just a piece of looming. I don't. Think Dave gets it. What what the problem is, Crow? I don't know what, why you seem to be struggling with this. Um, Khalid, it's just a simple bit of looming. And because both he's being looming, honest right? with himself. That's why he's struggling with it, because he's being honest. I'm being yeah, Rumpus. It's very see, clear see men that do their own research, Rumpus, they don't need people like you to tell them how to think or what to think or what they should be seeing or anything. They see what they see, yeah, and they find out what they've done. 
Yeah, sure, there's refraction every day. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So he seems to well, let, 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 story. Sir. He doesn't need you to say that. Sir. Uh, okay, well, he, well, I'm can anyone hear me? Anyway. <laughs> That's what it is. I'm telling you what it is. It's looming. It's refraction. It's no problem. Sorted. No, th that's what you think it is. No, we, can just, it's, we, we experience refraction on these sorts of things on a regular basis. And we're seeing one example here, what's called circulating rays, where the refraction of the uh, light it matches the um, curvature of the Earth. And therefore, you can see it makes the Earth appear flat. Or in this particular case, or in the black swan case, it makes it appear slightly convex. But do you think you're biased, so Rumpus? Circulating rays are a well-known phenomenon. Well -known. Rumpus, Funny how do you everything think you're makes biased? the ball look like anything but a ball. Rumpus, well, do you think okay, you're okay, biased? Okay, so when you see a mirage, then do you think that the, that the world's upside down? No, you don't. So you accept mirage, you accept refraction does strange things, and this is another example. I don't quite see the problem. It all happens on a flat plane anyway. Rumpus, I'm just do you think pointing you're out that every observation, it's always making the ball look flat and no, it doesn't. motionless. No, like, no, sometimes, yeah, no, it sometimes does. It, no, it doesn't. Sometimes it makes it look even more curved. And when you have an inferior mirage, it looks, makes it look very strange. It, the, but there is, the standard refraction does make the Earth look a bit flatter. The standard refraction, 7 over 6R, does make the Earth look a bit flatter than it really is. But you can get other forms of refraction that make it look more curved. And uh, when you can get, there is more leeway to make it look flatter than more curved. The way hey, the Rumpus, works. are you done? Not, no, just nearly there. Um, and so the standard refraction will make the Earth look flatter than it normally is. And then we know Where, that from good, that you, you're holding, you're interrupting me. Um, and then when you uh, have circulating rays, which means the curvature of the refraction matches the curvature of the Earth, it looks flat. Go ahead. Where'd you get that 7 over 6 R from? Physics. I can go through the calculation Where'd you get the if you physical like. measurement of it from? Mm. What a phenomenal non-answer. Physics! Well, I can tell you, if you want me to go through the calculation with you, it's quite complicated to determine what why it should be 7 over 6R, given the standard structure of the atmosphere, but it's possible to do it. I could go through it with you if you like. It's a, it's a, it'll take me about half an hour to explain it to you if you want to go through each step that will give you the 7 over 6R calculation. Dear for God, standard no. Answer. Maybe go away for a half an hour, put it, write it down, get it pre reviewed. Oh, it is written down. I can write, I can show it to you. I can go through it with you if you like. It'll no, take go you. Ahead. Man, I'm involves, so glad I'm it, on mute. It involves, it, it <laughs> this involves, is the most ridiculous answer I ever heard. It involves, it involves calculus, it involves no, we're quite differentiation. All right. so I, I have a better idea. Um, you could take that half an hour and go do a real experiment that we can all actually detect with our senses and then bring that and show us. That way we can see something real. That'd be great. Well, we can see this. Well, we can, well, all yeah, I'll do is bring back this? a photograph. What, 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 difference, what difference is me oh, bringing? Hold on. Let me finish my experiment that we can right, Hold on. Hold on. Oh, no. See Bob Dole gets. Well, just before uh, Rumpus is about to lose his shit, I'm going to uh, shout out Chris the Flat Earther who says, Earth is shaped like a contact lens. Water will not stick to a spinning ball, but it does flow, and the Earth is laid out on four corners. Thank you very much for the for the super chat there, Chris the Flat Earther. Really do appreciate that. Right, let's just check on in on these guys. Uh, here we go. I might have to take control here. Here we go. People, work? is that the extent of your knowledge? Like, of, of, see an <laughs> honest person what challenging. I didn't hear any of that. Uh, can is I, can a I say... photograph the extent of your knowledge oh, of what evidence God. can be? Is that it? That's the only thing you can think of for evidence. For what? No, we've got, we've got loads of evidence of why the Earth's circular. But if we're looking, we're talking about refraction at the moment. That's an optical effect. So we need to look. We need to look at optical effects, and that means photographs. You right. got, there are many other ways. Of there are many other please. ways of proving the Earth is a sphere. This is just one. Uh, I'd like to say something in response to Rumpus and the rest of the panel. It's okay to talk? Okay. Yeah, so Rumpus says he cannot understand how I, I cannot the issues with him. Uh, breaking up a bit. I stated breaking, many times. You're breaking up a bit. We're, we're losing half and of what you're just, saying. Right, listen, yeah, I'm just saying what... You, the more you yeah. say that, Rumpus, then it seems to cut him off more, so just let him talk <laughs> well i'm just letting him know he's got to repeat himself because we, we didn't hear what he said yeah i know but it, if you keep interrupting him okay. it, it makes his thing connection worse for some reason okay it's it's good now so uh, uh I, I said it in many occasions and i'm not a refraction guy and there is uh you know very few uh leads that makes me talk about images 
like saying when things are deformed and stuff like that. And uh, I'm not bothered to say that according to my knowledge, which is, which is very little in that field, this is a good evidence for, for, for flat earth. I, I don't mind. And if someone make a video about it, say Glober is about to convert, <laughs> I really don't mind. I'm, you know, I'm not so invested in this uh, thing. I just here for a chat and That's share my, my views. My views. Okay. Well, I'm just saying, kind of. That's all we does, expect from any of you. Khaled, uh, the refraction does strange things. This is just an example of circulating rays where the ray uh, bends at the same curvature as the Earth, and therefore it look, makes the Earth look flat. This is a well known <clears> phenomenon. There, there are no such thing as rays light. Yes, there are. Okay. Andrew uh, Thomas Young. Rumpus. Andrew, Andrew Thomas Young. Thomas Young draws Says ray diagrams. No... Travis. Yeah. Okay, he listen, draws know, ray listen, diagrams. Rumpus, he was talking. Mistake. You just talked yeah, straight he, over well, the no, top of him. He draws in the middle of my Yeah, no. Yeah, he did, no, Paige. You I was talking him. and he no. interrupted no. me. As I was talking about rays, he interrupted no, me. Okay, right. Listen, listen. Right, everybody shut up a sec. So, Travis came in and he said there is no such things as rays. You said, yes, there is. And then Travis started to respond to say why he's going to say that there's no such things as rays and i want to hear what he was going to say so carry on travis sure if you if you go to andrew thomas young's website on the page where he doc, talks about ray diagramming or and ray tracing before he does that he says rays of light do not exist they are an inadequate mental construct but for the sake of argument you can think of them as real and here's a picture of them yeah, so there are there are some situations where it's no, not no, useful. No, they don't. Oh, I'm answering now. You've had your turn, right? So there are some circumstances when it is useful to think of light as coming in rays, and sometimes it's not. He only in one situation did he describe it not useful to think about rays, and that was when uh, he's you're thinking of a particular case when a ray is going along uh, horizontally along a layer, and he um, and and the people have made arguments that the light would not bend and he just goes into this particular situation that scenario it's not useful to think about uh them as rays and then he describes why the light will bend down even if it's going horizontally through a layer i think even other people like page have mentioned before who said that um uh going along a line of going along horizontally along a layer will not refract it when in fact it will and that's the point he tries to explain why it will bend in other cases he does draw ray diagrams so he definitely believes in rays in terms of drawing where light paths go but as i said it was just one situation where there is a different slightly different scenario where you need to think about it slightly differently to account for the fact that rays will bend when they're going along the line of a layer they won't just be um, uh, go along the following the line of that, they will bend. Okay, well, if something I is something, you can't think of it as something else sometimes. Yeah, you can. For instance, things like light Not if, can behave no, as If part... a rock is a rock, it's a rock. Well, okay, well, before we get into this, you can, well, you can, because you Hold can on, guys. Of wave, well, you not, can, not. but it's not reality. Yes, it is, because that's what wave particle duality is all about. Okay, so this this back and forth, you know, at least let Paige get more than 10 words out, Rumpus, please, and then she'll give you the opportunity to do your, your thing too. So Rob says, uh, Rob Keane says, uh, Ranty's ace, Rumpus doesn't get it. <laughs> Thank you very mm. much for the uh, for the super chat there, Rob. Very much appreciated. Right, Paige, uh, do you want to respond? Because he did mention you by name, actually. So please let let uh, Paige respond. Yeah, no, I was just saying that they can think of things any way they like. Doesn't make it reality. I can I can think of you know I can think of myself as whatever I want to think of myself as. It doesn't make it reality this is just a it's just a way for us to explain things to other people we make up a a concept to explain something it doesn't mean that's exactly what it is that's all right well the thing the difference is between you thinking one thing is that in science we actually have empirical evidence for instance that light can behave like a particle on some occasions and sometimes it will behave like a wave. It does both. as wave particle duality. And depending Science on doesn't the prove oh, things. Let me finish Someone my goddamn doesn't sentence. Know what Shut, empirical up. Means. Shut up. Shut up. Right. So there are occasions when light will behave like, behave like a wave. And sometimes they will. But this is a well-established fact that we've understood for hundreds of years. It's a basic part of science. Go ahead. Rumpus. Science doesn't prove things. What are you talking about? 
Well, yes, it could all be down to invisible green pixels. That's true. But the evidence all so right. far, what we can say in science is the weight of evidence supports this particular position. Yeah, but, but we, it's not proven. Let me finish my sentence. But we can't <laughs> be quite twat. But we can't prove it. But the body of evidence. Oh, there, there you go. Proof. Oh, there, quiet, you go. there you go. You have no quiet, proof. Three quiet, hours quiet, later. Quiet, twat. That the probability is on one. We have all the evidence. Triggered. But the, all the evidence points to one thing, but we can't well, say it's proven. Always triggered. But it's not it's proven, right, Rumpus? Triggered. Nothing is proven in science. Great. We could there all you be, go. We could all be in a matrix. We could all be software emulations, and so you can say we can never prove it. But what we can say is that all the evidence that we have points to this particular thing, and until someone disproves <laughs> it, uh, that's what we're going to stick with. Then you wonder why you, you're not able to see things as they are in reality. Because you have this concept in your mind of, I don't know, fucking Arnia. Well, yeah. You've just got a simplistic view of the way you, you don't understand science. Therefore, you just go for the simple answer. Science in reality is complicated. That's things like quantum mechanics, general relativity, time dilation, special relativity, thermodynamics. All these things you don't understand are complicated. And because you don't understand right. them, yeah. you reject them. All right, but they're not on, proven, Robert. right? Isn't science they, they don't empirical? prove anything. All the evidence points to them being true, but because it could be down to invisible green pixies, and we could be living in the matrix, we don't say it's proven. But all the evidence, all the evidence points to it that being the case. Am I? But as long Am... as it's not proven, then you don't have a point, though. Yes, we do. Just because you can't prove yeah. something doesn't mean to say it's not true. For instance, I can't prove you're a twat, but all the evidence suggests that you are. But right. there's but no you such thing as prove proof. It. But there's no such thing as <laughs> proof. It, there's no such thing as proof. Everything is evidence-based. Period. So when you're making an observation, all you can say is we have a very strong, reasonable um, a set of of observations that show that something is probably the case. There's never a situation when you can say this is absolutely 100% factual, which is why well, theory but... is the term used. That's a little bit um, you incorrect. You got to no understand such what the word proof, proof means. When something is is fireproof, that means that it is resistant to fire, not that it is a hundred percent insusceptible to fire. Okay, so when you prove something, you aren't making it invulnerable to anything ever. What you're doing is you're setting it up to be resistant to other things, right? So whatever thing it's proof against. So if you, right, that's more you of a can prove argument. something well, well, okay, but what about empirical? And, and there's no logical proof or no logical yeah. way to refute it because it is proved logically. Well, okay? Hold on, Rick. Rick. Hold on, hold on. Let me answer to that. Rumpus, let me answer to that. Okay, right. Oh, could, okay. Could five seconds. Five seconds. Five seconds. Logical proofs are different, and they are invulnerable to attack. If you prove something logically, it cannot ever be invalidated. Finished. Okay, so right. somebody's about to respond, and in the meantime, Rumpus, yeah. if you can have a think, so Sound Zero is ready to ready to say something. I just want to say that uh, Brandon K wants a question answered from you at some point. Uh, ask Rumpus why the moon shadow will never change. Right. Okay. So think about that for a minute, um, and in the meantime, Sound Zero, you've got something to say. Uh, yeah, I was going to say that resistance doesn't mean immune. So uh, your example on the fire thing, it, it doesn't hold, you know, water. It's yeah, but when we're talking about valid, proof, and, when we're talking about but proof the claim that nothing is ever proven, well, that's not that's not true. There are things that can be proved so that they they cannot be attacked. Like he just stated, there can be logical proofs that there is no way to refute them. You can't do it. It's impossible. Yeah, that's the sort of proof we're talking about when we're saying science can't prove anything. Like um, air pressure expanding into available volumes. Black that spot. is something that always happens. Yeah, but Paige, it, for instance, we you could say the, you, the the sun has come up over the um, has risen every day for the last hundred thousand years. Does that prove well, it's going to do it tomorrow? No. So just because something's happened yes. every single time, hold on, let me finish. Similarly, as I said, we have all this evidence, all the evidence points to things like wave particle duality, but that doesn't mean to say... Rumpus, do you have a window open? No, it's Paige. Paige has got the echo. Somebody's got an echo. Can you switch off? Yes. So just because... Um, Mm, something's happened a hundred oh, please can I finish my statement? If something's happened two million times, it doesn't mean to say that the two million for the first time it will not change. So that's why just because you can't cite something has happened every time. What you can do in science is you can say if something doesn't happen, this is why science disproves things. So for instance, if I say that um 
all planets are red, you only, and like the Black Swan situation, so I, this is why it got the Black Swan name. I named it as such, and then bloody QE picked it up. I was saying that if all the swans, you, if you make the statement, all swans are white, you only need to find one black swan, and then that, that claim has been disproved. So that's why science disproves things. You can say you only need one instance of a claim being invalidated to it not being the case. So far, though, all the claims about quantum mechanics and general relativity They've never been invalidated. The wave Rufus. particle drive has never been invalidated. So therefore, we by, believe it to be true. By disproving things, you realize that you're proving other things, right? No, you don't prove them. You can only disprove something. You, for instance, oh, if you said there's a unicorn God. in your garage, and then I, and I go and search it. Water out, say, will always boil. That's proven. That's no, not. At certain temperature, yes. That's no, not. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. You yeah, just, I mean, see how you say, how you are not see how you're not an honest person. Listen to me, you, you're listen a pseudo scientist. Uh, listen to me. Listen, listen to me. You saying that indeed all the times we've tested it so far that it does. But let's suppose someone came along with a cast iron observation, an experiment that showed that it didn't, and then we'd have to go. It oh, will never be. Oh, John. And then we'd have to. It say, will never oh, be. Shut up! I haven't finished. And then we'd well, it say, will never shut happen. Up. Shut up, you twat! So if, if someone R would have to show need help, and then Rumpus, document that it, really oh hurts. My God, People wearing headphones. Rumpus, I'm Rumpus, Rumpus, we don't want to hear you yelling, sir. I'm just we need the server muted. We don't want to hear you yelling. We would rather you leave. Okay, right, listen, listen, guys, listen, guys. Oh I want to say, all right, listen, can Rumpus. Yes, you can, but just a minute, Rumpus, just a minute, right, Paige. Um, one thing I will su suggest is maybe because we're getting this bit of feedback from you is that you've got the the... The headphones on, so whatever you're listening to, it might be too loud. Uh, maybe that's where we can still. Well, oh, too loud. Okay, yeah, these are brand new, so. Yeah, so you might want to just waz them down a little bit, and then when the rumpus explodes like he does, and uh, his volume goes through the roof, uh, he won't bust your eardrums. Rumpus, please try and stop shouting so loud when you well, lose your temper, mate. Systematically, I get interrupted. Well, I've only got about five words into a sentence. I, I think I'm entitled to finish a goddamn sentence. Well, so well, why don't you... No, I'm not. I'm here to stop. Every Rakia, day. Rakia, if you let me... You should be able to handle yourself better, sir. Rakia, I'm you should be able to happy. handle yourself. I'm happy. You have I'm spoken 90% of the time. I'm not happy to be interrupted. That's the big difference. So but all I was saying, be quiet... Yeah, I'll but in the real world, quiet. in the real world, in the real world, Rumpus, right, people interrupt people. It's just I what they do. I don't mind that, actually. Right. I don't mind the occasional interruption. Like you That's, just interrupted him. I am him. perfectly happy with the occasional interruption. I'm not happy about being systematically interrupted. Then so why don't you, why don't you, when somebody, you feel that somebody is talking over you, why don't you just move back away from the mic count to five listen to what they're listening to listen to what they're saying just admit just just think right i've been interrupted if, if it's not a problem five, go go back see. into zen Quite mode annoying. hold a minute go back into but zen mode and go, right now, exactly exactly i'm only four words into a sentence because i'm still talking yeah, I, talk. I still haven't been able to finish this sentence what the, sentence the is me talking let me say this <laughs> the reason why i interrupt you rumpus the reason why I interrupt you is because I already know what you're gonna say. You're not that smart. Well, that, you, know? you might not. I can well, tell. You might be the I can heard yeah. you see how you interrupted me. Zero, you see how you interrupted you me. Know what I'm going to say. You <laughs> still should allow me to finish to say it. It's not gonna. I'm not many four words in. I'm not going that much longer. Finish and then your I will sentence. let you speak. If you start, finish if your I interrupt sentence. you four words into your sentence, you're gonna get a bit annoyed about it. If you do it all the time and you do make a habit of it. Right, so you interrupted me, and then you interrupted Silent Zero, um, and you interrupted Rakia. And... Silent Zero, I was supposed to be talking to Silent Zero, chipped in again. Wait, right, right listen to me. Ranty again. Just give it five seconds. When you think somebody's interrupted you, take a step. Like, I'm only four words in, Ranty. See, so you just interrupted me again. Yeah, yeah, no, you interrupt because you keep on saying the same thing, and I'm pointing out I'm about four this words in quite ludicrous. often. And I think after four ludicrous. words, I think... I think it's not acceptable you to are not an adult. only you four can't words have into a, a sentence. Conversation. I'm happy to, Rumpus, you, I you think you need time to interrupt if you've been speaking for about a minute, but not four words into a sentence. I think this... Rumpus, this right, say what you're going to say, so Rumpus. You say what you're going to say. Well, I think this ego thing that you have online is taking over you because... No, the rest of us can get along quite well, and we, we're happy. If well, somebody interrupts, in if somebody interrupts us, we, you know, for me personally, yeah, I just, I, 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 I keep like you're doing now, like you're doing now. 
right? So my I, goodness. I take a step Imagine. back. I take if a step. Every single oh, time you I give in. I give in. You got interrupted. I give in. You'd be, start to get annoyed, wouldn't you? That's all you, I'm asking. Not you do it every time. Four words. You do it every time, Rumpus. I don't. You do. Oh, I've forgotten anyway. And... Well, I was making a point about logic. I'm and... so let me just say... Racky, go ahead. You... I... Go, Racky, you want to speak? Go ahead. I'll stop talking. Go on. You Thank you were going to say Finally. that someday somebody can come up with a way that water doesn't boil as in, at the temperature it's supposed to boil. Right. Let's now, I was going to... I was going to answer that. Okay. Is it, okay, that's go impossible. Ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Right. Yeah, Let's I was going to say that's imp... All right. Well, but it's Whatever. not go impossible. Ahead, go ahead, then he keeps talking. Let's well, he suppose. Keep, have you finished? Have you finished, Silent? I didn't finish, but yeah, okay, I mean, you ahead, keep interrupting then. me. All right. Uh, I, well, to end is that assertion is just impossible and we can dismiss it. That's it. If you find something you think to be impossible can be shown to have happened, then you have to fix your, fix your science. Einstein showed, that, for instance, that time could be changed. We thought that was impossible, and then he demonstrated that it, that could happen, and so we had to then change our physics. So if someone were to go away and prove that water didn't boil in particular circumstances, then we would have to revolution our physics. That could be that only might happen near a black hole, where all physics breaks down, or when we're going near the speed of light, or, in fact, the fact the world is run by invisible green pixies who decide on a particular situation they don't want to let water boil. You don't know that the world's not being run by invisible green pixies. All right. You, time is just a construct. He didn't show anything in reality. That's just a construct, Rumpus. I don't know if you know this. There's different sure. types of calendar. Can I respond All right. To that? Go ahead, man. Right, we have demonstrated that time slows down. GPS relies on this. If you take an atomic clock from the, from the ground and you take it, say, to the top of the Eiffel Tower, they will run at different speeds. We know that the, the existence of some subatomic particles, which are very fast, change dependent on how fast they're going and how, how far they are away from the Earth. We've established All right. Can you present that information? No, 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 no. Present that information. No, you're not finished. Let me finish. That's good. Because you're going to ask the same thing as I am. Go on, go on, Rogers. Nearly finished. Get on with it. Experimental proof of this. It's not just something that's made up. We have experimental, verified, validated things by numerous scientific institutions that time changes with speed. And with distance from the Earth. Go ahead. Okay, right. So, can you prove that? So, we, uh, I think Raki Show us this and, experiment. Yeah, Raki Life and Rob both wanted you to uh, to show that information, and I do too. So, can you provide the information? Is it like, does it change one second in every hundred million years? Which particular example? You want the speed going near the speed of light, or, or no? The from the Eiffel the... Tower. You said from ground level, from right, sea level okay, to the, the Eiffel, Eiffel Tower. Tower situation. Right. So. So you want to know uh, the measurements of atomic clocks. I mean, they, you, I think uh, I'm not sure they've done it to the Eiffel Tower, but certainly they've taken up in aeroplanes. They've taken atomic. Because you're on glue. Uh, be quiet, you twat. Um, <laughs> we have. There have been numerous. Wait, hold, hold on, hold on, Be quiet, twat. Be quiet. I'm in the middle hold of a sentence. On, I've got four words in you, twat. No, no, hold on. You, shut up, shut up, twat. Uh, Just there are hold numerous. On, be quiet. There are numerous Just experiments. Be quiet. Be quiet. Be quiet. Show us one. Just show us one. There are numerous experiments. Do you guys see how there are numerous experiments? Right, come on, guys. There are numerous now. experiments. There are numerous experiments of Rumpus, atomic clock. Oh, I give up. I give up. It's no good. Right, yeah, okay, you we'll see how it. everybody. Hold you on, see how everybody is able guys. to back away? All right. Listen to this. Okay, Rumpus said. They did this on the Eiffel Tower. We said, show us. He goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I don't know if they did it on the Eiffel Tower. Okay, listen. Yeah, you exactly. You have no credibility here, Rumpus. None. Zero. Zero. No he's, credibility. He's left. He's left. Zilch. Zero. Oh, we don't need him. God. Right, so I'll try we and find out that him. information somehow. Does anybody know what the claim is that, you know, I mean, how much is this time supposed to have been measured to change by? I mean, right? I remember sure hearing about this. First it was... of all, they have to assume the speed of light to begin with. Yes. They're talking right now that they're not sure about the speed of light anymore because of just all the new... Well, they're saying dark liquid, but dark matter, dark energy, and the combination thereof, they're changing their story about the speed of light as fast as the speed of light. 
It's just <laughs> right, Dave. Because flat Earth is getting to them. It's it's coming around, man. This is this is getting like the next five years is is a turning point. We're getting I believe, close in the to pretty cool mess. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. It, it, it will only be a matter of time. We only, you know, that's all that we're up against is how quickly we can get this information to the people who don't know about it yet. And as soon as, you know, because most logical, rational people will see what we see. So it's only well, a matter of time. Well, Paige, how how quick the rumpus joined the call when uh, Crow was like questioning and being honest with, with these pictures, yeah. right? How quick yeah, he joined exactly. to to say, How "Oh, you, you shouldn't be doubt. Yeah. You shouldn't doubt or yeah, don't stuff doubt, like that. Don't doubt the ball. Yeah, I'll I'll tell and you what you're supposed to, to think. To Come back his, to the fold. His science allegedly. We need you, man. I mean, I've never met any of you guys Join in person, us. and I'm pretty sure I can guarantee that not one of you has ever seen light not be instant. Never yeah. once. Yeah, it's always no. Because that's, yeah, it's that's the way instant. it works in our world. So they they have to assume it has a speed to even get to the point where they're talking about manipulating time. Well, their their math is based on it. Their equations of everything else is based on that formula. And yeah. when you take away that, like they're slowly doing, anyway. like they're, they did with gravity, now they're introducing um, dark energy to get rid of, of mass attracting mass, uh, levitation and things like that. They're having to change their equations and introduce other things that, that you know slowly integrate that the speed of light might be different because of this and this and this. You're going to see that in the next five years come out in mainstream more and more. He he says something about GPS. Just to mention this, GPS are not a reliable tool, though. I I I can tell you that. I've been driving trucks for ten years, and I can tell you so many times the GPS put me on the wrong side of a river when he's supposed to put me on the on you know on the other side where. The, the company that I supposed to be going, it was, and I was on the other side of this happened in Chicago to me a couple of times. And they, 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 like, they're not reliable as they think. Well, it has some issues. Yeah, definitely. A bit like time and date is off. Like people think it's just that time and date's perfect, but it's not. Like, yeah. My GPS and my it, magnetic compass are 12 degrees off right now due to the time of year. Now that has more to do with the the magnetic compass than it does the GPS. I would say the GPS is more accurate, but um, certain times of the year it gets twelve percent off. You know, twelve degrees off. Like other times of the year, it's only about two to three degrees off. Daily purposes for things like finding our way around a new town and stuff like that, and they they misconstrue that with it establishes reality for sure. Like those, those aren't the same thing. There you go. That's a key there. That's exactly what they do. So I guess he ran, um, when he was going to be put to the, he's, he was going to have his toes held to the fire by Travis there, uh, to come up with the, uh, the time differences from the Eiffel Tower. And he didn't like that because he didn't have that information to hand, did he? You guys have pointed it out to him before, though, that he hasn't, he doesn't seem to go out and do anything himself. He relies on the books or the, these people say, the experts, the tools show, things like that. You've, you've brought this up to him, it seems like, multiple times, and he, it's, it's like he refuses. He will not go out and just do, like, one experiment showing one of his thoughts is true. Well, to be honest, well, it's like and I have to just let just let me <laughs> just let me inter uh, respond to that. He did say that he's planning to do the Bedford Levels experiment. Now, I don't know if you guys are aware of what <laughs> what his plan is in this, but his plan is to organize it all, set it all up. He's got these all uh, all these different markers that he's going to put out and um, elevate his target and elevate the camera. All this fancy stuff that he's going to do, and guess what? He's going to do the filming, and he's never, ever used a camera before. Never done a long distance. Now, Randy, you and I know that's not possible to do, and in probably a three or four day span, he's trying to do it in one day. This th that will never happen. I mean, I don't want to be negative, but he's he's way above his bounds there. Like 
it's if he does it, I have no problem like like looking at the information and seeing what's going on there. But if you remember back to when he he was started explaining the different things he needed to do, I need these kinds of batteries for this thing, and I need this for this other part. I, the way he sounded and just from you know the history that he seems to have shown on the show, he sounds like NASA saying, "Well, here we need to get this thing established and this thing established, and then we're going to the moon." Except. Two years later, then it's like, well, this thing went wrong, and so here's our new target, and then we're going to the moon. So if he gets it done and he shows us, fine, great. But what it, it, it seems like to me, what, what I would guess just from my information now is that what he's going to do is he's going to come up with this and that reason the same way NASA does for, I can't do it this time, but once I get this in place, then I'll do it. And basically just string along. I just wish he'd uh, take my advice and get someone else to do the, the video in. Yeah. Hello, can you hear me? Is uh, there going to be any flat earthers there? Sorry. Yeah, here's that. Hey. You're, you're very low, Gleam. You're very Hang low. on, Gleam. Let Bonjour. me sort your... Is let that me, better? Uh, just let me sort yeah. your volume out. Is that better? I could, I could sort mine out my end. I had to turn it down a little. Give uh, me a yeah, you can just put it up a tad. Yeah, is that better? Hello? Yes. Check. Bit better, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Lionel! <laughs> Lionel? <laughs> Did you get number yeah. one? Did you get to number one? No, only in the UK reggae charts. You Put got it to... this way. Yeah, I didn't I didn't get to um, number one in any normal chart. I, I, I don't even think I got in the top 200 at all. How yeah, many... You have to set. You have to sell about five thousand, six thousand for that. And well, how many did you sell? I don't honestly know. I won't know for two months. But we're we're talking we're talking hundred in the low hundreds, if that. Put it that way. So it wasn't amazing, but it was all good fun. It was. Uh, I suppose it was a uh, something different, you know. Yeah, Continue. straight away, straight away. It set me up. Set me up for what what's coming next. Put it that way. Go on, tell us all what's coming next. Well, it's just more music. I've, I've put it this way: with the, with the guy who produced that whole track, uh, I've still got seven, eight tracks recorded with him uh, that were leftovers from the last album. So there's there's another album coming. Put it this way. Is it all reggae going? Yeah, there's. Uh, I've still got a back catalogue of hip hop to do. So I'm 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 toying with the idea of doing uh, two a double album, one hip hop, one one reggae. Yeah, that reggae is sort of like <laughs> a yin and yang. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I just wanted to I, I come in just as Rumpus was going out, and uh, I, I don't know whether I'm scared of him or what. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, there was the the experiment he was on about was the Hafel Keating. And there, and there is a massive, um, a massive misunderstanding with time dilation. Um, it does, in, in my eyes, it does exist. And with with what you were saying there, how how is it measured, uh, or how how little is it measured? And it is tiny; it's fractional. Um, but what they're basically saying, and it, it's pretty logical if you think about it, um, that if I'm on one side of the universe, you're on the other side of the universe, we both look at each other at the same time, um, they have put a limit on the speed of light. Therefore, it will take X amount of time for that light of my eyes opening to get to you. Yeah, so like the sun takes eight minutes for it to hit Earth. Um, it's, it's the speed of light. You're limited by that. Now, d time dilation comes and is intrinsically linked with that, um, where if, if you fly a plane eastwards and one westwards, but slightly higher, because you're further away from Earth, time would have a, a different effect. And that's what this Hafel Keating experiment was about. They flew one left, one right, um, but slightly higher and they had a, a slight fractional difference but it actually agreed with special relativity and the special relativity part is this time dilation and length contraction the length contraction bit is a bit more difficult but time dilation is is just purely the, the, the limit of the speed of light that, that's all it is 
in my understanding, should I say. So the time dilation is the, the, the time it takes, let's say, from one event to another. When you say it's minuscule, how how minuscule are we talking? Fractional of a second, sort of like point and then five digits afterwards of a second. Over how long? Uh, I, I think it was about uh, 12 hours in the air or something, or seven hours in the air. It was, um, they, they literally set the two atomic clocks, it took hours on the ground to because you've got to stabilize it you've got to switch all the engines off you've got to have no magnetic inf interference all this that and the other you set the atomic clocks then you start up the engines then you fire off the planes in either direction and then they fly for hours then they land then they take the time and one of them was flat fractionally faster than the other so you say they've got to have no magnetic um interruptions so no, it's minimal this was done back in the uh i think it was 80s or something like that 86 or something so okay <laughs> technology back then well yeah, it was a big massive like server cabinet that they had to wheel onto a plane that's what the atomic clock was back then right okay so they wheeled this thing on the plane it's like but are you going to tell me in those flights there was no um there was nothing else on that flight that could have changed the variables no. Yeah, all, all they're basically saying and all they're saying that they're proving is that time uh, gets less the further away from the reference frame center being so, Earth. So that was one... Ah. Wait a minute. So this was one test with the most minuscule difference. Yeah. And it's never been repeated since? No, it, it has, but have you, have you heard of the twin paradox? You know, them two astronauts where they say, oh, yeah, one of them's slightly older than the other now. that That is what it is. That's what time dilation is. The further away from Earth you get where we record time from, then the, the, the um, less time happens, let's say. Does anybody on the panel believe this shit? That, that is literally relativity. <laughs> I don't. I have to uh, beg the question of the universe then. Like, that sounds like it's like well within and... margin of cool error story, bro. Of their their tools oh, and their oh, measurements, shit. but that sounds like it's well, well within a margin of error. This this almost insignificant amount within like twelve hours or whatever. Uh, but I even if say... it was true, oh, like you can't do anything with that information unless you start imagining things like space and millions of miles and millions of light years away and stuff like that anyway because of how minuscule it was to begin with so it's useless information yeah i mean the the core thing about it i will say the inventor of the atomic clock lewis essen and definitely look lewis essen up he's one of my favorite scientists he was 100 percent against relativity and einstein he literally wrote papers saying einstein's relativity is nonsense so understand that that the guy who invented the most precise tool to measure the speed of light did not agree with what i just explained and i'm not saying i do however it, the, the concept is logical it's a, it's a relativistic point of view rather than an absolute point of view it, it all depends where you're measuring time from. Hey, Glenn, could you uh, explain to us this idea of cesium decay and how that plays into this whole concept? Yes. Okay, so an atomic clock is basically works of is quartz. Quartz has a special thing where it vibrates at a certain, certain frequency, uh, which is X, per, uh, X amount of... Um, cycles per second okay and that's why quartz was found to be very useful in timekeeping uh if you just walk along with quartz on your arm in your clock um it will keep vibrating and that will keep that certain can, vibration can, can i interrupt real quick right, yeah. right now to sure. ask you something so is this is this these things are built based on pre on the pre um uh how you say the the, the pre-concept of time that we have already presupposed the presupposed con yeah, the pre knowledge uh, of concept time. yeah we already knew what time. a second was yeah so yeah, if it, those things are built on based on this on on like 60 seconds is one one it is minute based on um frequencies and cycles yes 
um, and more at the lower scale in as much as quartz and cesium. Cesium, uh, I was just going to say, uh, enhance that, give it more precision detail to quartz, to standard quartz, let's say. Um, so the, the vibration of the crystal, uh, which sounds weird, but all, all things are vibrating, obviously. The vibration of the crystal, you put that in the circuit, and I, th I think it's actually two crystals because you cross-compare, so you make sure that they're both in sync. Um, but it, we're talking milliseconds or millionths of seconds, should I say, that it actually measures or vibrates at. And there's a certain certain mathematical thing about it that cesium was preferred. And then once they use cesium within the atomic clock, that was the most precise measurement of the speed of light that kept on being that exact same figure that locked it in, basically. And then they the, set the speed of light as the fixed limit, which is stupid. But. Can I ask you, does the vibrations of the airplane or any of the other stuff affect this instrument? Of course it would. Of course it would, definitely. One million percent. And they, they tried to prepare. I mean, this is the U.S. Air Force who done this. So they would have tried to prepare for everything. But it was back in the 80s. So their, their, their actual massive uh, Air Force um planes they they were actual troop carriers not not special jets basically so um yeah they're carrying these two big massive and as i say they wheeled them on they're like big server cabinets if anyone's been in a server room um just the clock alone was just a server cabinet and they had to wait there four hours i think it was for it at all to settle so yeah, they they made preparations for the day but yes there is lots of interference everywhere and you can even say as, as as much as going up that slightly higher or slightly lower can have that uh, an effect. Uh, a bump could have an effect. You know, what I mean, it's a plane. Um, you're not going to have a perfectly smooth turbulence. A turbulence. Yep, yeah, exactly that. So yeah, yeah, exactly that. But that is, if you look up the Hafel, it's I'll, I'll I'll pop it in Discord. Um, that is the one of the top evidences let's say for relativity wow and i will say that there is contestants of that and people who have written papers saying nah that's proof and direct proof of ether um the silver tooth effect was said to be that ernst silver tooth he he argued directly with uh, einstein but he was a nipper at the time and einstein was well well established by then um but yeah, it turned out that the silver tooth effect is a temperature effect, but it turns out the temperature is directly uh, related to background radiation, let's say. Uh, but yeah, I've just put that in Discord. That that was what Rumpus was on about. That's what he'd be referring to at all times. And it's, uh, yes, the concept is logical. It's It's the logical proof of relativity to say that you measure two times and they will be different when you land. Um, but yeah, there, it could be a manner of things that could be affecting that. Just want to say that WS says, um, he says it goes further than that. They swapped the clocks over and repeated it. Special relativity that, is one of the most confirmed theories in history. Not, gen <laughs> not generally. Like. Uh, these people believe everything they not I, I will agree with that, but not general. general is the mad one. General is gravity, yeah. basically. General relativity is the most confirmed theory in history, period. I mean, you can laugh about it, but it doesn't change that as a fact. No, special is. Not well, general. he said special. Yeah, yeah special, special is not. <laughs> general is, is gravity, basically. General is the geometry, and uh, special is about uh, flat space and fast speeds, basically. I mean, it's definitely logical to me that if you're measuring time from here and you move further away, that there would be a difference. I mean, I can see, I can see their argument. I just don't think it how they've um, tested it is quite. It all depends on what um, reference frame you choose to start with, because if you fire someone yes. from space 
um, the exact opposite would work for them. If they've got a clock on their hand, exactly. your, your yep. time will be dilating in their reference frame. So it's, that's what they were proving rather than a magical thing that automatically, I mean, length contraction is a bit different. That is entering a bit of a, a bit of a world, but it is similar. It's more to do with space. Than Blaine, where did you put that in the chat? Uh, the, the general chat, is it? General, okay. Or have I, no, gossip, sorry, I put it in the gossip. I just wanted to start rumours. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> well, the gossip is for gossip. So, you know, if you want to start rumours, that's the that's the the uh, server to join. <laughs> but to to whoever said uh, general relativity is the most confirmed, I I strongly disagree. Um, it's been kicked out of the standard particle model in favour of quantum field theory, and it completely fails on the galaxy rotation curve problem, which is my 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 drum to be in every every which way so if if it disagrees with experiment so do, you, do you want to quantify that do you want to quantify that i mean it's one thing to say it do you want to quantify that okay if you look on cern's website standard model um they do a full explanation of saying why gravity is completely removed from the standard model um because it's incompatible with with the uh, now, you're, you're, you're misunderstanding the standard model that the the only incompatibility issue they have is between special relativity and quantum mechanics there's no incompatibility with gravity there is it, it, well certain are wrong then on their website no i mean they're they're, they're not there it's not gravity is not incompatible with any standard model there is an incompatibility issue between quantum field theory and special relativity there is no issue with gravity and how it fits into the equation Gravity Bro, is it, incom it, incompatible it, if, with both models. Go on, sorry. Oh, I was going to say, if he's going to engage with you, he needs to pay attention to what you're saying, right? Uh, it seems like he, he has this pre-recorded thing he, that he wants to keep saying, and uh, he's not paying attention to what your answers are. I've just posted up in the general chat, uh, just to read the sentence that it says. Um, let me get to it, sorry. Okay. However, here we go. So the standard model includes the electromagnetic strong and weak forces in the carrier particles and explains well how these forces act on all matter particles. However, the most familiar force in our everyday lives, gravity, is not part of the standard model as fitting gravity comfortably into this framework has proved a difficult challenge. The quantum theory used to describe the micro world and the general theory of relativity used to describe the macro world are difficult to fit into a single framework. No right, but it's also... It's also I'm not finished. No one has managed to make the two mathematically compatible in the context of the standard model. Mm -hmm. Which is what I just said. There's a problem between special relativity or general relativity and the quantum field theory. But that's it's also incompatible to quantify the idea of what a superposition is. But that's something that has to also happen in quantum field theory. So no one's denying that there's an issue somewhere in our understanding of the universe. That, that, that isn't the question being asked. The question that's being asked is, do we have enough evidence to suggest that gravity is a fundamental force in nature because the very first paragraph that you didn't read where it specifically says that from the few building blocks called fundamental particles governed by four fundamental forces, gravity is one of those four fundamental forces. Three of them are quantifiable in quantum field theory. The fourth one is not. So there's a disconnect somewhere. And we are aware of that disconnect. We don't know exactly where it is and people are working on solving it. But when you say that that one sentence shows that gravity can't possibly exist and that's certain secretly admitting that, that's really not the case it's, it's just, just not it's just not you said that i said it's like, well, what are you insinuating then that because it's in because those two models I'm have gravity, is wrong. gravity doesn't exist that's not gravity what i heard at wrong. all the current the current theory of gravity and general relativity which is what i explicitly said there i said whoever said general relativity is right and has been proven i disagree and then i went on to this and then you've just said, yeah, it's general relativity. There is a right, problem. But, 
but you're wrong. It is, it is a known fact in science, though, that the relationship between space and time and gravity is the most confirmed theory in the history of mankind, period. We, it has been used to accurately predict the discovery of dozens upon dozens of things, including gravitational waves, including the first picture of a black hole, which I know you guys are, it's easy to just dismiss those as CGI and picture. not real, but we're talking about we're talking about dozens and dozens and dozens of things, not just those two things that are accurately predicted by a model. So when you talk about having a model, you have to be able to use that model to then predict reality. If you can re-extrapolate reality from the model, then you know the model's good. If you can you start with a hypothesis, sure, but then after you have a strong hypothesis and you have a strong theory, you can then take that theory, if it's true, and predict reality. And that's what you can with special relativity, with general relativity, with gravity. Those things have been confirmed literally thousands upon thousands of times independently by independent people who don't work together. I disagree. I absolutely disagree because I've, I've just said that about, I said, yes, I agree with special relativity. Relativity is a fundamental basis I agree with, yeah. However, I said not on general relativity. General relativity fails at the small scale, particle scale in the standard model, and it also fails at the galactic scale as well. So the standard model of cosmology is now 95% dark stuff because of this failure of gravity and or the laws of Newton's motion. So... I, I completely disagree. The, we have designed this thing called general relativity and gravity within the confines of the heliocentric model. Okay, we've then tested it on a small scale and a larger scale where microscopes and telescopes got better, and we found it doesn't work. Simple. It's that simple. It doesn't work. It's the wrong theory. We need additional stuff, additional invisible stuff, or we need to remove it and completely so then, allow it. Do you deny that gravity exists, or do you just deny that the current model is incomplete, or do you, or, do, or are you just saying the current? I, model I, is I state categorically, general relativity is incorrect. Okay. Do you have an a theory of your own to replace general relativity? No, and that's the current point that oh mainstream goodness. is. In. I've all I've only got evidence it's wrong. Put it that way. Do you need? Do you need a replacement for you to be able to yes. say, okay, that... Yes, you do. If you remove a model that wow. actually predicts thousands You can't of take away his toy and not give no, him another one. No, no, if, no, no if it's not about... That, that was my down, question. You need a new car before you can tell that old car isn't working anymore. No, 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 How no. How no, ridiculous. No. First and foremost, you didn't demonstrate in any way that special relativity or general relativity are flawed in their, in their design or their structure, period. But yes, if we're go even if we assume that you did, no, you didn't. You just said a bunch of words. It did, it, there was no. He's about to get triggered, guys. But if He's about to if get you're triggered. going to say, to. He was way triggered already. Hey, if you're going to say that a model that we have that accurately predicts thousands of different things is incorrect, then it is on you. The onus is on you to provide an alternative hypothesis that can incorrect. also explain no. that phenomenon. No, that is not incorrect. No, that is not no, 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 no. This is where you're wrong. We've already admitted There's nothing it. Nothing to back that up with. They've already admitted it. I've just read you a mainstream document from CERN saying, yeah, we've chucked it out. And that same I, document, I would... that same document in the first paragraph says that there are four fundamental forces of nature. Yes. Gravity is and one then it of those four. Saying it doesn't however. correct itself. It explains something you just don't understand. It says it's however. Not correcting itself. However means correcting. It says however, the no. most familiar force it, in our everyday a... lives, gravity, is not part of the standard model. Right. It's explaining a well-known... It's explaining a well-known deviation between quantum field mm -hmm. theory and special between relativity. The However, model. there are already, by the way, you, you didn't mention this, there are already several, several theories being put forth that do connect those two dots I've together, mentioned it for including years. Including string theory. So we're, 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 there string are many, many, many things. Nuts. String theory has already string, been disproved. String theory is nuts because, because you say so. Know. Exactly. String Proof. theory is nuts because you say so. Gotcha. No, it's nuts because Sabine Hossenfolder and Eric uh, Wernstein, uh, Wernberg was on PBS Space Time saying exactly that yeah, about two days ago. That's listen, why I'll quote mainstream. It, there we it's, go. It's, there's no – listen, the, the, the idea that science is a is a consensus is, for, is, is, is the most ridiculous So why are you trying to make me – Any one of you guys Wow. Science is not a consensus. So science why are you trying to make me say that general relativity is the absolute? It is not. Because, it's been general, proven to because fail. general relativity is the one of, and no, it's not even the one of, it's the most verified theory in scientific history. 
and and in uh, relation to special relativity. They're both part of the same theory, by the way. The theory of relativity thing. encompasses both sides, not just one. You don't get one without the other. I say nonsense, and the the first postulate is uh, basically breached in the galaxy rotation curve problem. Do you know what the first postulate of relativity is for both of them? One is nested. You're talking about the laws of physics are invariant? Yep. So the laws okay. of physics don't work in the galaxy rotation curve problem. No, They're not at all. The laws breached. of physics are invariant, talking about inertial reference frames. It has to do with the difference between dropping a penny inside mm -hmm. your car and the difference with dropping a penny on the surface of the planet. They both yep, fall so, straight down, even though you're so, moving, re yeah, disregarding yeah. what's happening around you because you're in an inertial reference frame. No, That's proven every single day of your life. You've misunderstood. You've misunderstood. When I we don't. use those same principles that you're talking about there on galaxies rotating, it doesn't work. It's factor of 10 wrong. How? So how? Tell wrong. me how. No, this, you, you can say that. But the reason for how. dark matter's existence, proven by Vera Rubin or in Vera Rubin and Kent Ford's paper in 1980. 21 rotational galaxies and fully documented hundreds were fully peer-reviewed still unresolved do you know do you, do you do you actually know what dark matter is nobody does it's a hypothetical label for a mistake of general relativity which is why they come up with two models it's not a, a mistake fix of newton's a laws mistake. bond and a fix of gravity uh, yes it is lambda no, listen, cdm might and a fix be. of it... an assuming that General relativity is correct, and there's this new but mysterious... Until, listen, until you can break down the equations that give birth to the idea of dark matter, then you can't just Math say it's imaginary. You can't do Mathematics that. Mathematics are not reality, buddy. Mathematics are a measurement and an, and an extrapolation of reality. You can use... But they are, they're not reality. Yes, they're yes. not reality. Bro, if I have they're two peanuts and I give you two peanuts, now no, I have zero that's peanuts. That's reality, boss, and that's mathematics. You just said that you <laughs> derived him. it from the math. So did Give you me minus, math or minus five peanuts, idiots. Listen, yeah, just because you don't understand the math doesn't mean you're not representing the reality. Have. I'm just saying. No, they yeah, understand the math and they tell no, me. No, listen, guys, I hate to break it to you guys. I'm not, not, I'm not even being rude, but the idea that math no, and you, you, you're, you're an idiot, reality bro. is the dumbest thing you've ever said. You're breaking nothing. You're breaking nothing. You're spouting nonsense. You're not breaking anything to anybody other than math. Yes, I know. You're stupid. I understand. It's fine. Yes, math and math can describe things, but it's not reality. What it's happens when the math of it. doesn't yeah. match the observation? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So okay, every we... single time we have a conversation, we're talking about concepts, right? Nothing we're saying is reality. If we're going to use that same type of argument, that's retarded. We're talking about theoretical oh, ideas. So maybe we should show it to theoretical them. physical realities. Yeah, so when you're talking about right, don't talk, oh, please don't matter, hold on. Real, I can use trigonometry to measure the difference right. between Roman me and you on opposite sides of a river. That's reality. His trigger, right. his listen, his trigger. listen, everybody, right? Listen, listen. Please don't talk over each other. <laughs> you know, we're getting four people talking at one time here. So, uh, come on, like, come on, guys, let him speak. So, Broman, carry on your rant, and then uh, nobody interrupt him and let him oh, let my, him my, get my, his my rant's over. It. I already said it. Right. Okay. Can I can I say one thing real quick? Uh, Matt, Matt, when he says math is this, okay, math does has not been officially defined by any person, right? No, the, you can't go to the dictionary and see math is this so when he says what math is that's his opinion he's just puking mainstream talking points all over us what do you we what, don't understand so mathematics doesn't have a definite frames you're stupid yeah blah, blah, blah. you're ignorant i didn't say that i i said you're stupid google, yeah i did say that i did say that. google if just Google right now on your own, man. Uh, Broom Legion. Google if mathematics has been officially, right, officially defined. If there's an official definition of what mathematics is, it's, it'll say it's not. It's under fierce debate, and there's an ongoing controversial philosophical debate on what okay. math actually is. That same, that same argument can be said about pretty much any, uh, any concept. In, no, in, in no, science. hold on. Absolutely, hold absolutely. On, no. Any, any, any okay, field I, of science, I, people constantly argue what those okay, fields no, no, exactly no. encompass, why, where, and how. That's nothing new, but you're not saying anything. You're no, not saying me, anything that's that's, that's mind blowing. That what you here. call science is not science, pseudoscience, though. No, no, no. Yeah, science well, is the is the, it's the pursuit of understanding. There is that's why there's no such thing as fact. It's all theory. It's all we have ninety nine reasons to believe something, 
and until you give me a better reason not to, that's the accepting theory that we're going with. It, mathematics is always a pursuit of understanding, so the definitions are constantly being expanded upon. It's the same thing with autism, it's the same thing with almost every single field of science. You can probably find a fierce debate on what exactly a geologist does versus what exactly a paleontologist does. There, there are always going to be debates in these fields on what exactly okay. the encompasses are when it comes to the definitions. That's a semantic argument, doesn't mean anything. No, no, hang on, let me, let me explain why. Let me explain why it's not a semantical argument. Because if I told you, I said, I have a rock. Now I can prove I have a rock in my hand, right? You would say, okay, let me see it. And I would, you, you would come, you would, I'd show you the rock, you touch it, you'd be like, we agree this is a rock. You'd be like, yep, we agree that's a rock. I agree it's in your hand. Now that right there, that's reality. Now, when you start saying, well, that's just observation. Con- hang on, hang on, hang on. But there's no, con- was there any controversy? Was there any philosophical debate on whether I was holding a rock or not? So I, I hear what you're saying, but why should we stop okay, but our I'll- pursuit at things that we can see right in front of us? Why should we stop our pursuit at things that are just easy? Don't, okay, don't but you hold on. yourself to a higher standard than that? Hang on. So when you. Oh, can you on. see why? Uh, hang on, hang on. Can you see why? Ahead, can you see you. why? I, uh, I know. Can you see why you a rock falls, out, Chris, or do you only see long. that it? Yeah, yeah. No, I gotta watch my uh, green green circle now. Can you see why a rock falls, or do you only see that it does fall? You can use that argument for a lot of things, but when you're just looking at it with nothing else in context, just answer the question, buddy. No, no, okay, how about, fuck, how, fuck you. You don't dictate this conversation. It. You're not even in this conversation. Go sit back in your corner. Keep going, bud. Oh, I'll make the, I'll make the, it's okay. It's okay. I'll make the conversation, okay. I'll make the question even broader. I'll make the question even broader, okay? No, listen, you I, I can already answer your question. Hold, hold on, but don't cut me up. Don't cut me off. Let me just get it out. If you don't want to answer it, that's fine, but just at least let me get it out. Can you ever see why something happens or only what happens? No, we, we usually see only what happens. I can agree with you on that. Okay, so now how are you going to tell me why that happens? Wouldn't that just be a personal belief? Since we can't that's, exactly, that's, exactly that's exactly my point. That's exactly my point, though. When you ask that question, okay, but that's you're completely my point. ignoring. You're, but, but when you ask that question, you're completely ignoring the tens of thousands of reasons that we do actually have. We're not just talking about me sitting here going, well, listen, even though I can't prove it to you, I promise you this is exactly why it happens. I'm not asking you to believe me. I'm asking you to research the thousands upon thousands of predictable observations that we were able to predict correctly using the theory. If the theory was wrong and it falls apart and it's not correct, then it would not be able to predict observable reality. That, 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 okay. that's, so, that's, that's, that's the point. Let me give you a get, let me give you, let me give you an example why I don't accept that. So let's say I go, I predict that the sky is going to push a rock down at 9.82 meters per second squared, right? I dropped the rock, bam, the, the rock fell at the exact prediction rate that I, uh, does that mean that the sky was the reason that it, uh, the sky pushing it down was the reason because my prediction matched and I can predict, oh man, if, with the sky, with this, I can tell you how the velocity you're going to need to throw a baseball to have it go hundred feet, you know, cause there's this, the sky pushes down with such a force, a predictable force. I can, make predictions right. based on this but that's be- does, that, does that mean i'm right that's the beauty of it though because if in that context i would say okay so you predicted one thing using your theory so now let's remove the sky as a variable as a control and see if we can get the same 12 feet whoa whoa whoa, go, whoa, whoa, whoa 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 how do you remove like, the sky how do, wait go, wait wait how do you remove the sky how do you remove the sky from the equation go inside if there's no sky there's a ceiling above your head now so how is whoa, the sky whoa 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 well, you have a, okay, so if I put a, a, a cement block over the earth and said, there, now the earth is in effect. No, I'm saying that you, you just said. Oh, oh, so you can do, oh, so you can block off, you can block off the sky with a concrete block and say, look, it still falls, but I can't put a concrete block and block the earth off and say it still falls. You, you must could, if you, get a block, I just if you could get a block, if you can get a block that big, but what, what I'm talking about is that's the nature of how science is conducted. You make a hypothesis. Oh, you no, say, no, okay, well, you're, no, it's. Do you not understand that all you did was you made a hypothesis? First, we have to agree that a hypothesis is a guess, right? Hang on, wait a minute. Let me let me go back to what I was saying. Though. I want to I want I want to address whoa, what you said. Whoa, 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 no, no, I want to address on, what on. you said before okay, we move on. on. I want to address what you said before we move on. So you said, well, if I make a prediction that the sky is going to push this down, and I know it because it's going to fall at 9.8 meters per second squared, I'm going to say, okay, well, let's see. We drop it, we measure, we go, oh, look, it fell at 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, so you've made one correct prediction. 
Now we have to find a way of testing that variable without the sky being a controlling factor to see if it's correct. You have to continue the experiment. Okay, okay, but now find the reality. You can't just settle on one. That's not how science. Okay, is so then. Okay, so 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 then my question to you would be: When did you remove the Earth and its effects? to prove that that's why something doesn't fall. Because that's exactly what you said to me. You're saying, you have to remove the sky, so we're gonna do, okay, so then you have to remove the earth and do some experiments. So how did you oh, do that? That's just the easy answer in this one particular situation. No, 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 wait, 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 time out. You just, you, bro, you just gave yourself a double standard. You the literally just there. said, we, hang on, no, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. But that didn't remove the earth. So you no, but told it, me but I have to remove this. Hang on, no, let me finish, let me finish. You told me you have to remove the sky. That's what you said. So I'm saying, okay, if that's the standard that you're holding my sky pushing down to, then don't yeah, you have to be held to the same standard as having to remove the earth to say that the earth is pulling it down? You're creating, sky pushing it down? You're creating a false equivalency. Oh, because it absolutely. goes against your religious fundamental no, it beliefs. Doesn't. It doesn't go against it. <laughs> absolutely, it does. This yeah. guy, man. I mean, you can you can say that, sure. I mean, that doesn't make you right. I, I do. I do say that. I, yeah. Well, you your inability I to explain to why you're wrong. Hang on. No, your, I you why you're your, wrong. Your inability to distinguish you between a pushing it. down. Hang on. Your 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 inability to distinguish between a pushing from above or a pulling from below is always going to be your fundamental issue because you can't see, see the underlying mechanism. You'll, oh, the, hang on, you'll always have to take a guess. The Cavendish experiment was the same exact concept that you're talking about, removing the Earth's no. effects from the measurements. No, the Cavendish didn't. experiment no, took, I think it, was, it took six months, I think. It took them months and months and months and months and months how to did get they, a how did they block measurement. Now listen, it's, it's not about you. you How do they block important. the gravity? Listen, the Earth is obviously too large to block, but what he was measuring oh, okay, was the well, then they couldn't do it. between those two individual balls. So the oh, two right. individual things is the measurement that he took. Period. It, it took him months and months and months. And um, how they insulate the rules on the things, You don't. You how? don't have to. You just have to control for it. You don't have to. You don't necessarily. And have to why removed. does he have? Why does he have to remove the sky? I didn't say I did say the word remove, but all I meant was is stop it so that the sky is not the only. Okay, thing but here's the problem. Here's that's your problem. Here's your problem. And that's only again. That's only in your little story that you. But let me, no, no. I, I'm going with you. I'm going with you. I'm going with you. The sky has a lot of mass. Okay, now you can say we've only been down eight miles in the ground, right? But there's a there's so much more fucking sky above us, right? It, and hang on, don't don't. It, it could be almost infinite. Right. So what if, yeah, mass, sure, sure, mass attracts mass or maybe, rap, mass, you know, but how do you know the sky is not having, there's so much sky around us, it's just pulling it into this ball. Maybe we're not being pulled into the ball from the center, it's being pushed into the ball from the outside. Okay. And, and that's a perfectly valid thing for you to say, but now you have to find an experiment that can show it happening. No, that's no, the but onus. here's the problem. That's here's the, the problem. Here's the problem. problem. Here's your problem. Here's your problem. Fundamentally, when you look at something happen, since you cannot see the mechanism, you will never, ever, ever, ever be able to test between the difference between a push Ooh. from above and a pull from below. You'll never mm -hmm. be able to distinguish that unless you were able yeah. to see how it's happening. If you I had my hand, hang on, let me finish. Let, let me finish. If I had my hand and I was pushing a ball underwater, you could say, oh, it's pushing it from above. If you, you know just saw the, hang on, you didn't let me finish. If you mm -hmm. just saw the ball, if you just saw the ball going down, you would have no idea if it's being pushed from uh, pushed from above or pulled from below. You'd always have to guess. No, no, because we have many other observations that we can make, though. That is, we're not, again, we're, you're looking at this but in a you're, vacuum. You're saying one observation is all I need to tell me all about reality, right. and that's not the case. When you are forming a, a, a hypothesis that can accurately predict the world around you, you have to account for many, many things all at once. For example, we used gravitational calculations from, from, from Newton to accurately predict where another planet might be in the sky, and then we discovered another planet. So when we are talking okay, that's, about- that's a story. That's not a story, that's absolute fact. We discovered your- No, were you, were you there? Were you there? Okay, were you there? Were you there when the guy wrote that? Were you there okay, when- Okay, but hang on, hang on. 1800s? Okay, stop, stop. That Eric hang Baker, on, I'm not- I'm sure you believe everything he says. I'm not- I, bro, I'm not, look, I don't give a shit about Eric Dubay. If you're going to tell me something is true in fact, right? If I said I went to Kid Rock concert and three other people were like, we saw him there, right? You know, so now we have verification that I went and did it, right? And you're just saying, well, I wasn't there, but I believe it. That's did, ancient, did ancient civilizations believe the earth was flat? But I do, how do you even know there was ancient civilizations? 
I'm just How asking you to know that. Do you I, think I don't even believe there were agents? I, I don't even believe there were. I believe so they're how, like 100 years old. I believe the planet's like 100 years old. 100 years old? <laughs> All right, quantify how that. How old are you? How old are you? How old are you? Are, are you just using I'm that just saying it's a belief. Listen, but if we're going to take the That's idea that the only thing that... Listen, no, hang on, hang on a minute. If you're going to say the only thing you can ever believe is based only on your individual personal experience, then you can't even tell me that Japan is a real country. You can't tell me that fucking Australia is a real country. You can't tell me that there are fish in the ocean. Yeah, I get it. I get it. There are. There are. Yeah. Okay. I get it. It's it's, it's, it's a nonsensical argument. A million and one things. But no. Well, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. If don't you think there should be a standard of reality? I think that we are attempting. Attempting to okay, find hang on, hang, but you're, you're you're attempting you're attempting to deflect. Do you right? Shouldn't if I was like, look, you got all of the questions right. Now, if somebody got two questions wrong, they didn't get them all right. So we need something that we're like, yo, I saw it, right? I I touched it, I held it, I know it's real, right? Do we not need a standard like that? I don't know why we would need a standard like that. That's one well, reason well, we could, so I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. So so somebody doesn't come in and give me some bullshit story about how there's people underneath me on a ball with water and atmosphere strapped to it in a vacuum chamber of pressure spinning and moving around fireball. That's so I don't get bullshit into who's, some story. Who's like in a that. vacuum chamber? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, a, a vac- I said a vacuum chamber of pressure. You need to listen yeah. to all of the words that right, I know. No, no, I know, but what, so what, is that, what are you referring to, space being a vacuum? Uh, the, the surround, if you're going to tell me that what is surrounding mm-hmm. Earth is the same pressure that is in a vacuum chamber, and when you put a vacuum chamber, you put water in a vacuum chamber, it boils away, right? I'm going to start asking all these questions. I'm going to say, what is supporting the earth? Are we falling? Are we just suspended in nothing? What is going on? Are we floating in water? How, what is happening? Well, How are we spinning? Uh, if, 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 we're, if we're using the explain, see, that's, that's the thing that, I, that bothers me, though, is when people talk about rejecting the standard model, rejecting what we understand about reality, you do it in a way that clearly dictates that you don't understand the model you're trying to debunk. So that, that's the issue that I'm trying to have. So like when you say like, so what is it? The earth is just suspended. It's just floating. Well, no, it's, it's not floating. It's not suspended. There's no forces acting upon externally other than the sun. So it's in a constant free fall of orbit around the sun. There are forces acting upon it. It's not just floating in space. No one ever says that. No one's ever made that claim. So when, when you talk about ridiculing the, the global earth theory, we go, well, oh, so you're saying that we're on this spinning fucking ball that for some reason things just cling to it. And like, it's like, well, it's like, no, that, that's not the explanation that anybody has ever given in science. So why do you use things like that to ridicule the argument okay. when it's a complete deflection of what the argument is actually saying? It, 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 it's a convenient argument because- Okay, it means okay, 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 wrap time. it up, wrap it up, wrap it up. Okay, okay, wrap it up. So here's here's my question. You're saying, you're saying it's falling in a circle, right? Is that what you just said? Yeah, that's what orbit is, yes. Okay, so I've never seen anything fall in a circle in my life. When I, I used to play baseball, football, basketball, every time I would punt, kick, throw a ball, you know what it did? It came down to the ground. It didn't fall in a circle. I've never it didn't seen just an start going in this spinning circle. Okay, so, so pr- prove that. Prove that that's a, a, a physical possibility. I've never seen an aircraft carrier. It must not okay, be well, that's, well, I've been on the, I actually, I, I've been on the, there's an aircraft carrier in New York that they let you walk around. But you're, you're deflecting away from trying to prove that no. something could fall in a circle. I'm saying that Hang on, let me finish. Hang on, let me finish. Let me finish. Wait, wait, wait. Hang on, hang on, hang on. The, the foundation of everything, hang, yeah, the foundation of everything you're telling me is hinged on the basic uh, uh, premise that matter falls in a circle. Right. You, without that, no. you can't have anything. So if that was impossible, no. if no, falling in a circle was impossible, right. your model would be impossible. Okay, but it's a major one. It's he's, all your orbit. No one's right asking you. Is, he's without comparing orbit, Narnia stories to real things. In, no on one Earth. is asking you to base your perception of reality on an aircraft carrier, are they? So it doesn't matter if you believe that they're real or not. Okay, and that's no, fine. You don't believe they're no real. One, Fantastic. But, so now we're equal and back exactly where we were. You can't no, prove gravity. All, we don't believe it's real. That's a false equivalency. No, a, a, an aircraft carrier can be extrapolated from smaller uh, ships on the ocean. So it doesn't, oh, you can, it, it you doesn't can extrapolate that a aircraft carrier exists by watching smaller boats on the ocean. First off, fucking nonsense. Yeah, Secondly, yeah. you can do the same no, thing no, with no, gravity. No, that's, no, no, no. You are making a false equivalency by bringing up an aircraft carrier when he's talking about orbits. Those are not the same thing. 
No, no. The equivalency was that the argument is not acceptable to just say, I've never seen that happen, so it must be fake. That's a stupid okay. argument. No, but, let, we let me demonstrate, argument. but we can demonstrate legitimate. buoyancy with ships on the ocean. Exactly. I can demonstrate a ship floating. You'll never demonstrate an object falling in a circle. Yeah, it's called get a telescope and look at any of the planets. Don't tell me what it's oh, oh, that's the, <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that's okay, first, first you got him. That's circular logic. Tell you what. Tell you what. It's circular you know logic. Can, let me tell you, you know let how, me tell you why that's circular logic. No, I already know you what you're gonna say. Start with what, because because you can't start with what you're trying No, you can't start with what you're trying to Well, if you don't care, if you don't care. If you don't care that you're using circular logic, it's because you're in a religion and no, you don't care about. I'm not. Really I'm not starting. Truth. Now, listen. You're pushing that we're starting with an assumption. That's where the circular logic comes in. Just okay, because so. you see it that way means it must be true. That's fucking nonsense. I'm not starting Wait, with you. the assumption. I'm saying. Wait, not, I'm saying. I'm saying that if the mathematics for an orbital mechanics did not work then we would not be able to accurately predict every single lunar eclipse for the next 10,000 years. You can't even predict one of them. Just fucking those, one of them. Not okay, even, it, listen, it, you can't it, even predict the next one. So don't no, tell right, me about on, my- Hang on, hang on, bro. Relax, bro, on. relax. Do you know what yeah, the stereo cycle is? I'm calm as fuck, what are you talking yeah. about? Yeah, you're not. You're going nuts, bro. You're going nuts. You eclipses are on, eclipses are on a cycle. They're on a pattern. Want... No, 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 no. Solar eclipses are. You can't predict a lunar eclipse. I fucking dare you to try. You can. Uh, we can. All the eclipses. All the eclipses no. are on a cycle. Dude, dude. Yes. Go predict. Then, then do it. Read predict your own the next Google one. Predict the next lunar eclipse. Go Google it. We predict the next lunar eclipse for me. Do it. Predict the next one. You yourself. Not Google. Predict the next lunar eclipse for me. Fucking do it. it. I'm not. I'm not. Look, look. I'm not claiming that a lunar eclipse predicts what matter can do okay so before you I'm saying say, that you have I to predict, use orbital mechanics hang on let me finish 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 you're not using orbital mechanics because orbital mechanics is a phys hang on yes orbital mechanics hang on slow down bro slow down orbital mechanics is a physical it's process no no listen it's just accepting Let, listen to me listen you to me listen to me listen to me listen but hang on let, hear the words orbital when you say an orbit that's a physical mechanical process right mm -hmm. yes sir Okay, so now when we're talking about physical processes, I don't care about predictions because prediction, that's a mental mind game. That's thought, then you don't right? care I, about logical. Hang on, hang on. You're, you're just interrupting, which means you're not listening to what I'm saying. You're just waiting He's to not say listening. what you want to say. Yeah. Okay, so think about the mechanical process, right? There has to be, in order for this mechanical process to happen, it must be physically possible, right? Can you demonstrate that it's not physically possible, though? That's a that's a straw man argument. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, hang on, dude. Don't care. Slow down with the straw man. So, if I said, would a ne if I could never demonstrate something, let's say I was like, hey, I think the Easter Bunny is real, and you're like, well, prove it. And I was like, man, that's just something I'll never be able to do. You would be like, hey, well, since you can't demonstrate it, it's not true, right? I wouldn't have to prove he's fake. Now, what you're doing is saying, well, I know I can't demonstrate it, but I know it's real. So, what do I do? I'll just get him. I actually, to I actually told you I could demonstrate it, but you won't listen to the demonstration. You, but it's not a demonstration. You're looking at the sky. Exactly so what it is. The sky, but hang on, it's not. They're not going in a circle. All you see is it going over your head. So you don't get yeah. that entire circle. Yeah. You don't get that entire circle around. You never get to see it go under your feet, uh, then right. around the other way. So that is blind faith because you didn't. No, it's see not. It. It's not. And here's why. So let's go back. To okay. Uh, can I go back? Can I? Can I let me go for a little bit? Right, just for a little bit. So what, what I'm simply saying is, is earlier we agreed that the way that science is done is you make a hypothesis, you test for the hypothesis, and then you, you continue to go until you have enough controls in place that the only possible thing that could possibly be affecting it is the one aspect that you're controlling for. When you are looking at the moon, and you say, now you're correct about solar eclipses, by the way. I, I know a lot about the, the moon and its phases. Solar eclipses fall in a pattern. They drop back every month, I think, every 180 days or something like that. They're, they're very predictable via pattern. Lunar eclipses are not the same thing. Lunar eclipses are very difficult to predict. And so what happens is, is you have to make the hypothesis when you're first learning how to predict lunar eclipses. You say, okay, well, let's hypothesize that the moon is a physical object that is circling the Earth in, a, in, a, in, a, in an orbital pattern. And then you make the hypothesis, you develop the mathematics for it, and then you use those mathematics to predict the next lunar eclipse. If you're correct, then you'll be right. If you're not correct, then you won't be right. The fact that we are not only correct on the next one, but on the next 10,000 of them is, is the problem. I'm not starting. Nobody started with the assumption 
it, it's a hypothesis. That's how it goes. You have to start somewhere. So you go, okay, well then let's assume it's round and that it's orbiting us. If it is, then I can predict that the, the next time that these two things will line up is at this time during this month on this of the world. And when that prediction came true, you go, great, we did it. We successfully showed that this is the hypothesis that is effectively describing the observable phenomena that we see around us, which is why I tell you, okay. you know, focus on you when you say that's not accurate because we didn't let me, start. Let me, tell you, let, me, let me tell you why I disagree with everything you just said. So first, your, start, your entire foundation, right, is based on an assumption and a guess. Okay, so what you're doing is, let's assume the moon is a physical object. Let's assume the moon is uh, floating above my head and nothing. Let's assume it's falling in a circle. And then we're going to make observations. Now, what I can do is I could do the exact same thing without any of those assumptions. I'm just going to be like, I see this light in the sky. It's moving. It's now here. Let's do some math on how it moves. You're trying to manifest a mechanism, right? You're trying to tell me, I know the unseen process that makes this happen because no. I can make predictions based on my guess. Yes, that's, that's exactly... That's, that's exactly a narrative what, hang on, hang on, on. let me finish, let me get it out. Well, let, okay, so let me explain why I'm, I'm showing you that this narrative is true. So it, orbit, we said that orbit is a physical mechanical process, right? Now this physical mechanical process in order to be real must be proven in a physically mechanically processed way. You can't just say, well, if, then if, but maybe, but we didn't have, and then we are here. A physical process must be demonstrated physically. So all you're doing is going, I see what I see, and I'm it's going, I see it too. Apparent. Hang on, let me, let me finish. Let me finish. I, I agree that the moon is uh, uh, up in the sky. I disagree that it's a floating rock orbiting and falling right. in a circle. And that's, because that's that what, doesn't happen. And that has no impact on the observation. What you think the moon is doesn't impact you seeing the moon. And that's where you fundamentally misunderstand the nature of how observation is done. So you, you, it is not accurate that you have to be able to – to recreate every single process in order to prove it to be true. That there's observational data that is taken into consideration when you do experimentation. There's observational experimentation, there's demonstrable experimentation. So when it's, it's like that argument where people go, look, I can spin a tennis ball and water flies off of it. That's a stupid argument because that, that doesn't prove that water would not be affected by gravitational pull of a giant massive object, especially when the spinning tennis ball is happening in the atmosphere of that said giant massive object. So when when we are talking about the concept of observation, you look at, I'm not saying somebody just looked at the moon one day and said, oh, I bet you that's going around us. Somebody looked at the moon and watched its pattern for months and months. In fact, in fact, it took somebody 15 years to first get the prediction right for lunar eclipse after they already had the idea in their head that the moon was circling the earth. It still took them 15 years to figure out how to predict to, to accurately okay, predict. Okay, okay, you're running so, on, all, you're all, running on, you're running all, on. Yeah, all, all your hypotheses are on falsifiable things though yeah here let me let me ask you this when we're talking about information right to get new information right so in order for me to know anything about the moon i have to observe the moon right do you agree which is exactly what somebody did for 15 years yes, okay 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 hang on hang on don't 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 i uh, you like to ramble so why i'm trying to keep this point short so we observe you the moon you, and that you ramble too come on okay so we observe the moon and that's how we get our new information so we agree on that Right. Okay. Well, now, no, but it we, doesn't just stop at that, though. You observe the moon, and then I know, you observe okay, but hang on, about hang on. it. You have to make predictions. You have to make hypotheses. Okay. And you have no, to no, you don't have things. to make anything. Just yep, hang on, do. hang on. This is how you're ranting. Things. You're ranting now. You're ranting. Okay, but calm down. Calm down. I'm going to explain. You're, you're you're jumping ahead. I'm trying to make a point. I'm trying to make a point. So all, right. all the information that we have gathered that we have right now about the moon, we got from the observation, right? Say again. No, no, no. I, 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 yeah, I think so that all of the every, information. Let me answer the question. Here, let let me answer keep it short. Keep it short. All of the information we got about the moon, we got from observing it, right? We started with observation. Yes. Okay. But can you, okay. So can I get actual, true, factual information about the moon and what they're going to do by thinking and, hang on, by thinking and pontificating about it? Yes. Are, are you arguing that you can't come to conclusions that are accurate? With wow. No, no, I didn't say I, no, you didn't hear what I said. You didn't listen to the words I'm saying very specifically. I didn't mm -hmm. say come to a conclusion. I said, can accurate. you get factual, factual truth information about what the moon does by thinking about what the moon might do? No, you start with 
I, it, fact, don't tell me. It's a simple yes. It's a yes. It's a yes or no question. That, that, that not, answer I don't have, need a story. That question doesn't have a yes or no answer, so I can't answer that question. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So then I'm going to ask a new one. So I'll ask a new one. Is the only way to gather factual information about the moon is to observe it directly? No. Okay, so what you're saying is you can get truth about what the moon does without looking at what the moon does. That's a simplified answer, but uh, yeah. Got him. Okay. Uh, is, is, uh, got did, him. You, did, you, did, you, did he answer it? You want to take that answer? guy in joke back in 2009? He said that? yes. Yeah, he, he said yes. Uh, so, okay. yes. Okay, so can you get new information about the moon and what it does without looking at the moon to see what it does. Can you do that? After extrapolating on its observed behavior, yes. Okay, so okay, so so first you would have to observe what it does. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's your factual information within so, what you're going to work with, right? Why are we able to predict the exact second that the moon okay, rises? But now you're you're, you're okay. You're you're asking you you're 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 leaving the conversation. I'm saying, look at the results. Totally to like look. You you just I'm said saying, you just said true. I don't care what you're result. saying. Yes, it is true. You're just like you just no, don't true. care about Hold what I said. Right ahead. He said we can predict to the last second. That's absolutely a lie. I can tell you the exact time of day, every single day on every part of the planet where the sun and the moon is going to rise in the exact moment it's going to because of orbital mechanics, period. No, that's because of you, cycles you and can. patterns. You well, can't do it. <laughs> that, the, the, why, the why something happens, yeah, like so we see the, the sun. If, if somebody thought the sun was a fairy, but it did this exact same thing and they observed it and got the exact same information and they're look, look, the fairies are going to have the sun over Minnesota at two feet. And they were right. That doesn't no, because, mean fairies are moving first, it. No, and, because, and that's what you're doing. Uh, but that's no, what you're I doing. Say something. Yes, first, it is. You have to prove that fairies exist. You can't start with the fucking assumption that, well, I think fairies are going to fucking lift it up. You're, you're starting with the that. assumption that Listen, Earth you're is starting with the assumption. You're starting Listen, with the assumption with orbit. Listen, just because you don't understand the scientific... Just because, Just because you don't, you don't understand, understand the scientific fairies. method doesn't mean that you get to fucking extrapolate. Bro, the scientific method is guessing. I just showed you how it's guessing. Right, right. Guessing you make a hypothesis you're and then you test it for What a guess it. is. You test what a guess. for it. No, you what you're doing, what you're, what you're doing is you're saying, okay. fundamentally, I can get information about what happens by not looking at what happens. And that is complete horseshit. Okay. The Let's only way, the only way to get, the only way, I don't know. Let me say, the only way to get accurate information about what will happen in reality is to is to observe it happen in reality. If you don't observe it happening in reality, you're just thinking nonsense. it's not. No, that's nonsense. That, that's you being two it's dimensional. Beautiful. If you want to be two dimensional, look, look, you sound like a liberal, but I hate to say it. What Biden 2020? I guess. Can I say something? Um, those or, cycles I mean, of, of the lights on the sky, though, the cycles. Of the Daylight lights in the sky, they were predicted Christmas. before, way before of, of our time, though. Say again, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. My bad. Yeah, I say the cycles of the lights in the sky, the the like uh, all civilizations, they they account for all those things. No, no, no. Ancient civilizations could not predict lunar eclipses. Oh, well, hold on. Let me. Let, can we think about this? Right. So, do you understand that the they didn't have the pictures. same? They didn't have the same communication that we have nowadays. Yes, they didn't have the same technology follow. and understanding. Hold on, yes. hold on. All right. Yeah, you, you don't listen, bro. You, you're not you're not trying to listen. I, I, I am listening. I, I'm just talking while you're talking. I listen. No, you, you don't. Yeah, uh, uh, that wasn't my point. That wasn't my point. The problem is that you, you're not paying attention to what I'm saying. I am. Go ahead. You're right. I'm all sorry. Right. Go ahead. So all civilizations didn't have the communication and uh, tools to follow the patterns of those lights in the sky. That's why nowadays we have a more precise uh, understanding of the patterns of those lights in the sky. Okay? All, but all civilizations, based on their, on where their, their, let's say, their country or terrain that they live, they have a perfect understanding of the movement of those lights. And there were different civilizations that had this... this uh, you know, the, the patterns for the lights in the sky. The problem is that they didn't have the communication to communicate with the, the other the other civilization and say, look, we, we see this. Uh, right now, the sky is moving this way. How is it moving on the, on your side or, or on your 
you know, on your from your perspective, they didn't have these things. Now yeah. we have a more like more tools and more advanced, and that's why we can yeah. actually follow follow the patterns in a better way. So, so if we have better, more accurate tools nowadays, and you accept that we do, why don't you trust the findings of those better, more accurate tools? And you also admitted that knowledge is able to stack. On Okay guys, coming up to two hours, I'm going to round up, so that will be four hours I've done this evening, hope you've enjoyed it, I will be recording the after show, unfortunately I won't be around to uh, to see that, <laughs> I'll be in bed, uh, but you know, if it's, I'll listen back to it tomorrow and if it's uh, pretty decent, I'll, I'll release it at some point, maybe during the afternoon, who knows, right okay guys, so appreciate everyone stopping by. Everyone that supported the show with the Super Chat has been absolutely awesome tonight. Thank you very much. Massive special thanks to Sam Hain again for topping up the, uh, the GoFundMe and also giving a Super Chat in the, in the last show. So very much appreciating to that. And yeah, I think that'll do for this evening. I'll record the after show and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.